Great, great. Well, I've wasted so much of your time, I feel guilty. You know, you know, one of the most important things as an entrepreneur is to manage your time. It's all, that's where the trick actually is. It's in the management of your time. Okay? When you own and take control of your time, everything becomes possible. Having said that, if I fall asleep, <laughs> wake me up. I, I, I don't think that's going to be I a problem. I left uh, Joburg this morning at 3 a.m. to get here. And we're glad you're here, aren't we? It's been a while <laughs> trying to get German Strive in, into Kampala to do something like this. And so it's, it's an absolute delight to have you. You guys um, have nice offices. This is. Thank you this very is much. Nice. Oh, thank you. I, I've never been here. No, he, he hasn't, hasn't actually. actually. Um, so allow me to do some very quick introductions. He's already apologized for being less, but when you're meeting the president, I mean, everything else has to wait, right? Uh, thanks a lot for coming and for staying with us and for being patient. And we're going to try and make sure you have as much time to interact with the chairman, as we, as we call him fondly, over at, at Kwese. I want to say thank you all for joining us. My name is Ben Mwine. I'm the general manager for Kwese Free Sports here in Uganda. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you for being with us. This event is actually being streamed live on KFS right now. And of course, on Facebook, we'll be going to chairman's page as well for those of us following us online. And if you're catching it either now or later on, you can share your comments. And of course, we, we all know about the afterthoughts. Uh, hopefully, there'll be 50 of those after, <laughs> after this. I um, want to say a big thank you for everyone else who has joined us, the Kwese team. Um, Mr. Richard Biarugawa, who is the MD of the National Social Security Fund. He manages a fund that runs about $2.5 billion at the moment and climbing um, upwards, almost three upwards. Dr. Holly, who is a local shareholder for Kwese. Dennis Kahindi, who is the CEO for Liquid Telecom in, in Uganda. Uh, he's just joined the family recently. Habat, who is our country manager as well. We've got some people from the Ministry of Finance, Richard Moviru and the team, and everyone else in your respective capacities. Uh, thank you so much. If I don't get to some of you, I know some people run away from the office, so you don't want to be seen. I think I saw like two or three MPs who are hiding at the back, uh, and that's okay. We, we understand that you, you, know, you want to be here. We need MPs. Yeah, we, we do. That's actually a big thing, we isn't we it? We need MPs. Um, because of the amount of time that we have that's limited, um, so you, you have to run away not too far from now. You're running around. You're in Kenya in a short while. You're in China. You're in Japan in the next couple of days. We have a dinner days. with uh, President Macron. We have a, a dinner evening. with President Macron this evening. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we've got things called border borders. Um, they, yeah. they usually help you cut through the traffic, so maybe those might get you to the airport a bit sooner than, than anything else. We'll see if we can arrange for, for a few. Any entrepreneur hours. can figure that out. I it's, know, right? It's got my investment. Yeah, that, that's money for you. So what we're going to do in the rules of engagement is this. Uh, we're going to do maybe just a 10-minute quick chat with Chairman Stripe, and then we'll give you a chance to ask any questions that you might have. Now, the things are very clear in terms of how this happens. Because of the amount of time that we have, you'll only have 30 seconds to ask your question. So you can't come and tell us your life story and your hardships. You can do that on the Facebook page, right? So for today, if it's an important question you've got to ask, 30 seconds to tell us your name, you ask your question, and we'll pick it up from there. And it has to be one question. So if I come and pull the mic from your hands, you can't complain. I hope we agree on that. OK, thank you very much. Right, um, so we'll, we'll get started. The first question I'm going to ask you is something that you just touched on about how a good entrepreneur has got to be able to manage his time. You, you've got one of the most impossible schedules in anybody's life. Um, someone was asking yesterday, does, does Chairman Strive sleep at all, if ever? Can we start from there? You're saying a good entrepreneur has to be able to manage his time. How do you do that with the sort of mad schedule that you've got to deal with on, on a daily basis? How do you manage that? Great, thank you. You know, um, it looks like my schedule is busy, but there are still people running organizations a hundred times bigger. 
You must always ask yourself that question. Okay? Which is what I used to ask myself. Okay? Because of late I've been talking about it's time for you to scale up. Okay? I, 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 and stories help us um, remember things. I remember once visiting an African businessman in Harare. He was very famous. And he ran a supermarket. Huge supermarket. And he said, come and see so he invites me to come and see him. And I'm sitting in his office, small little office at the back of the supermarket. And there are people counting the money in one corner. A lot of money, piles of cash. And it's 1 a.m. And he says to me, I'll be, I'm, I, I sleep at the back. And by four, I'm up. So I thought to myself, what a schedule. Then I said to him, so how does Mr. Sainsbury's do it? Because he's got supermarkets, one supermarket, a hundred times the size of this one, just one. And he opens a hundred new supermarkets every month. And he has never visited them. And last I heard, he likes to take long holidays. <laughs> Does that make him super intelligent? Okay. So process is central to our ability to create capacity. And it's the biggest challenge we face in Africa. Because you're all great entrepreneurs. But for you to rise to the level where you are running an MTN, an Econet, a Unilever, that's a global company. I sit on the board of Unilever. They have almost 170,000 employees. 180 odd countries. How do you run an organization like that? These are the questions that you as entrepreneurs now should be seized with. Okay? Not having some superficial understanding, but you want to be challenged. Why are they that big? How, how does the guy who runs that organization do it? Okay? Certainly my phone is not ringing every five minutes. I'm not erratic about it. Because I realized that I had to get on top of a process. You've got a business here. I haven't been here before. We bought this a couple of years back, right? Three years. Three years. Mm. I haven't been here. I trust this guy. Well, thank you very much. And his colleagues. Working inside a process that gives them time, that gives us time. So that's where our conversation about time should take us. Okay? Time is money. We agree. Okay? But we've got to build businesses that have processes, that have people. Okay? So one leads to the other. So I have good people around me. Take this here. You're here. Until I got here and saw you in this room, I had no idea what's going to be here. Because there's a young man on my staff who did it. It's his job. Okay? Comes into my, we're going to do a town hall. Yeah, okay, we'll do a town hall. Fine. Okay, what time? Boom, 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 boom. Fine. He's off. Okay? And he coordinated with you guys. He set it all up. Okay? I'm not going to run around to organize this, right? Okay. So it's, it's about having competent people around you, working inside processes 
that are creating room for me. And then at the end of the day, I need to be focused only on those things which require me. And strangely enough, there are very few. <laughs> so I've got time. One of the big things that's a problem in Africa is what you've just talked about, being able to let go of, of the process. The, you know the whole man with the key syndrome, mm -hmm. where if I'm not in charge of everything, nothing is going to get done, which usually leads to the moment, God forbid, chairman gets hit by a bus, entire economic group goes oh, down. Or I win the lottery. Well, oh, you it's win better the lottery. to talk about the lottery. Right. Win, win. <laughs> Hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, it seems to be a, a genuine problem that we have in Africa, especially regarding letting go of control and letting the process become bigger than you. Do you think that hinders the entrepreneurial spirit, especially in Africa, in the context that we're talking about? It's, it's, it's very much because when we hold these discussions, as some of you have been on the platform for a long time. I want us to be progressing. So tomorrow I have a Nairobi. Okay. If you listen to that town hall, it must add to this town hall. Right. So today let's talk about scale. We want to make our businesses bigger. So if you haven't started, today isn't your day, okay? Okay, senior class stuff. So I've been talking of late about the co founder. Okay, you are starting out as an entrepreneur and you have a great idea. It's agree it's going to work, it's going to be a great business, but now you have to build it. Okay, when you've been in business for a while like myself, it's a lot easier because you can, you can go and compete for the best people. I just met Sheila, where's Sheila? Get up, Sheila. <laughs> this is an amazing executive in our group. She is just out of this world, okay? She fights for licenses and she gets regulators and so, and, and, and then, and then every now and again, her reports gets escalated and lands on my desk. And I say, go, Sheila, go. Go, Sheila, go. Thank you, Sheila. You see, it, it, it's about people, OK? Finding good people. And good people function at their best when they're trusted. You know, you, does it mean things won't go wrong? Oh, they will. And they sometimes go really badly. Okay? And, but in what I found over time is yes, we have to have good systems. But you know, the best systems can't stop a criminal. Can't stop the best criminals. <laughs> so you better relax. Don't put everybody in jail, okay? Just because you want to stop the guy, you won't be able to stop. Okay? So we, what we try to do is to build around the systems, okay? So you have your systems of reports and, and uh, structures within which you are reporting. And so we know we can pick up that something is not quite right here. This needs to be looked at, and that's why you've got to be investing in IT systems, information systems that are ensuring the flow of information. But when you are starting out in business, what you gotta do, how are you going to get a Sheila to work for you? Okay, you will have to use other currency. Okay, uh, which may be making them a partner in the business making them a shareholder in the business, okay? So that's how we, we try to recruit the higher talent. 
But the higher talent must come in to complement what you cannot do. So I gave the example the other day, but when I started Econet, I had been running the business, I had been in business for six years. If you talk to anybody in Harare, I was a hot shot, I was doing pretty well. I'd been industrialist of the year, youngest ever, businessman of the year, youngest ever, I had 700 employees. I thought I knew how to raise money. Then I went to the bank, I said, I want to start a telephone company. They said, okay, let's see the business plan. I said, $10 million. This is 1993. The most I'd ever raised was 300,000. So I listened to my chief finance officer at the time, bless him. He had no clue either. So I went to find somebody I knew could do it. And I said, okay, come and work for me. I'll make you negotiated with him for weeks. You can have 10% of the company if you can raise this for me. He raised the money, got his 10%. What more can I say? He, he, he did something I couldn't do. You have to look for people constantly around you to help you do what you cannot do. Your network must be a network of people who help you to do what you cannot do. The people in your company must be people to help you do what you cannot do. Have we got that? My network help me do what I cannot do. My people help me do what I cannot do. If I can do what you can do, I don't need you. <laughs> it's logical about television, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> and that makes so, so much sense. That, I mean, it, it pretty much adds up. Um, allow me to move on quickly to something else that you're passionate about because, incidentally, it fits perfectly into the current setting you're in in Uganda. You pro you're a numbers guy. You follow numbers quite a bit. So you probably might know about how young we are as a continent. But Uganda in particular, where you're sitting right now, takes it to a whole new level. More than 75% of our population is below the age of 30. About 55, almost 60% is below the age of 15. And you've been making quite a bit of noise over the last few weeks and months about the agripreneur. Uganda is 80% subsistence farming. So you've got two issues here. You've got a very young population most of whom are trying to run away from the rural to come to the urban setting. And yet you're saying, look, the future for Africa is in agriculture. It's in being able to take food, become the food basket of the world. How do you encourage that young entrepreneur, that agripreneur sitting here watching us on TV, following you on Facebook, that they need to change their mindset? How do they go about changing their mindset from running away from the village to come and buy a border border, the small bikes that we have, and actually think about becoming um, an agripreneur because that's where the future is, isn't it? Yeah. So, how many here? How many here follow soccer? Know the rules of soccer? Most of you, right? So, if I say I came in here and I said, you know. Oh, I was watching football last night just before I went to bed. And Manchester City, don't like Manchester City. Me too. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But so, so I said, okay, Manchester City, we're winning 9-1. You would say, uh, was that soccer? <laughs> the number. Or well, if I came in, I said, no, the score was 18-1. You'd say, no, 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 that, that wasn't soccer. Okay? In other words, you have such an understanding of the game that you know the numbers. Yes, it can, it can happen. Uh, you know, I remember when 
Old Zaire was beaten 9 1 or something by Yugoslavia, but some of you weren't born. Uh, we ran away. Uh, but you, you know numbers. Business must be numbers. The entrepreneur must always function in numbers. Make numbers your best friend. Okay? And know when you see a number that this, this number, number doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. Nine times out of ten I read stuff in our newspapers where they're not numerate numbers. They're not grasping the significance of numbers. That you know. And no one shouts and screams to say, how, how can you say that? Uh, so let's go back to numbers. Africa's mean age, I'm going to post something on this in a couple of weeks. The mean age, which is, which is actually a better statistic, mean is half 19 years old. Half the population of this continent are under 19. Okay? Amazing, isn't it? So... It's a lot of young people. But what that statistic is also telling us in terms of the demographics is that the population of this continent will move from circa 1.2 billion to about 4 billion in the, in the lifetime of a lot of people that are actually in this room. I think 2050 is the year we're in, looking we're at. We're talking about but, turn of the century. Some right. of you will still be alive. Okay. Surprised? Yeah, because also one of the most fascinating statistics that's also driving through at the moment, Africa has the fastest growing life expectancy. We're actually living longer than we've ever lived. <laughs> and you are going to live longer. A child born today in, in Africa who escapes the first five years and uh, has reasonable nutrition, could live to 100 easily. In fact, certainly in the Western countries, any child born today will cross 100 unless it was an accident or, or conflict or, you know, that sort of thing. So we are going to live longer. But if we say that our demographics are saying that by the turn of this century, There'll be four billion Africans. A country like Uganda will easily be 150 million plus. Your population. Kampala today will be bigger than Lagos. Okay? They, they, will, be, they will be cities in Uganda at the turn of this century there'll be at least half a dozen cities the size of Nairobi today. Okay? So there's a, it's, the urbanization is unstoppable. Okay? Now, but it also means people will still... The, the one thing we all agree on is we all eat. Okay? So the market for food... Let's, let's drop the word agriculture. Let's talk about food. The food value chain. Nestle. Anybody know the company Nestle? What do they do? Okay. Some Swiss guy, some Swiss farmer started to make cheese with milk. Because you make cheese with milk, right? I understand. I've never made any. Today, Nestle's market cap is, someone Google it for me, maybe 250 billion euro? 240, 250 billion euro? Okay. If it were a country, it would be number three in Africa. Started with milk. Food. A two? 286 billion euro. Okay? Swiss francs. Swiss francs. 
which is almost like a euro. So that is, in dollars, it means there's somewhere 300 plus billion dollars. Well, only Nigeria and South Africa and Egypt have a GDP bigger than that company with milk and your cocoa. <laughs> okay? But always remember, it was started by somebody just like one of you guys in this room. Because that is where I always want you to see every company. Look at MTN and say, it was started just by somebody like you and me. Because we often don't do that enough. We, so when we don't do that, we become, we live in a world of consumerism. Okay? I want you to be challenged. Well, how can Mark Zuckerberg, in the 10 years, build a company bigger, whose, GDP, whose uh, revenue or market cap is bigger than Nigeria? One person. One person with a few co-founders. Okay? Look around. Went to university. Probably the same university as some of you guys here. He probably dropped out. Came too busy as an entrepreneur. Okay? Now, I don't did Mark drop out? I don't know. Anyway. So our numbers say food. So what, where, where are you in food? What about a packet of chips, sweets? It's all food industry, okay? Nutrition bar, it's food industry. There are guys starting nutrition bar businesses that are being sold for a billion dollars. Just making a nutrition bar so that some guy on a matatu who's hungry as he's rushing to work, okay? Who, who's going to, what are you going to innovate? Because the guy who made cornflakes did it with a cob of corn. What will you do with your matoka <laughs> to provide breakfast for the new urban guys that are going to emerge? Who is going to do it? Are you going to wait until you say, oh, Nestle has just decided, look what they are doing. Come on, guys. You are the ones who are supposed to do it. So we're looking food. Huh? So we've we, we got to look at that whole value chain from the primary production of the food, the agricultural side, right through its various components. There's livestock. What are we going to do in all, with, with all the challenges around livestock, nutrition, making sure people are getting enough protein, fish. These are all entrepreneurship opportunities. And what have they got to do with government tenders? Nothing. Why are you bothering yourself with government tenders and fighting with the old men? <laughs> and then you come to them, they are corrupt, they're keeping us out. Just leave them with their tenders. You go be billionaires, okay? <laughs> I think that, that clearly touched a lot of nerves. Uh, you just, you've also given me a brilliant idea. If anyone is in this room and wants to make some really good money immediately, start a business where you sell a cattle go in the streets in the morning in the traffic jam, you'll make money. Because, you know, usually when you're coming into town in the morning, you're thinking, I wish I could get some cattle go. But you've got to go to some Nalong or some place to try and find that. So if I can get it from someone on the street, I think you'd make some money off of that. Oh, oh but you've got to innovate around it. Right. How do you do it in such a way that it's... A, it's yeah. convenient, start, start right? Start seeing everything from that innovation perspective. How did, how did this guy who started cornflakes look one day at a corn cob in front of him and say, Mom, I don't want to eat it in this form anymore. Crush it. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to put sugar. I'm going to bake it. But by the way, now you don't even have to do it. Just copy it. It's not, it's not an exam, eh? Right. The only time you're allowed to copy isn't an exam, so don't cry. If, if it works, yeah. no need to fix that. Um, I've got just two quick questions before we open up to the floor because of time issues. One of them you've touched on already, but I think it's very important, especially for a lot of people, 
both here and the ones that are following. Um, there's almost four million people that follow you on Facebook, and for the majority of those, it's because they've seen what you've been able to do as an individual and the impact you've had on the world. You've been named by Forbes more than twice as one of the 50 greatest and most influential leaders in the world. That's no mean fit. And the question is this, the ability of one person to literally change the world, and you touched on it a little bit about the person who started Nestle, just you know, some, something like that. How, how does someone here begin to understand that that potential is on the inside of them. So there's an Elon Musk sitting somewhere who is going to change the world in such a way that people have to pay attention to electric cars, where mm -hmm. before they say, that's never going to work. You've been through your fair share of those, where people have told you, that's a stupid idea. There's a story that Richard told um, at an event I was a few months ago, and he was sharing the story in Uganda, and I'll, I'll use this and you can come in, about when he was a banker, and someone came to him with a brilliant idea um, and he called his, his board and his management team and they laughed at this guy. He hates himself now for it, but they laughed at this guy because they said, this is a stupid idea, it's never going to work. The idea was bottling water, making, right. making bottled water. Right now, everyone in this room is probably holding a, a bottle of bottled water next to them. 20 years ago, that seemed like a stupid, a really stupid idea in Africa, and the, uh, 30 years, and yet it's now it changes everything. And yet, each and every single person in this room, watching online, watching on KFS, has that seed on the inside of them. If there was one thing you would tell them to do to try and help that seed germinate, in, in what, what would that be? <laughs> how, how did that seed germinate for you? No, you know, because first of all, I want you to be passionate about entrepreneurship. I want you to be passionate about entrepreneurship Kick the habit of being a consumer. And we are all consumers. Okay? But the best thing we can do to this continent is kick the habit of seeing from the lens of a consumer. See, I, I will sit there and I will look at a bottle of Coca Cola. And I will marvel. How did a guy, at a time when hygiene was pretty bad, eh? persuade people to buy something that, to drink that was black. <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? was actually green, the very first Coke was, was it which green? is even worse. Yeah, it was green, <laughs> yeah. which is even worse. Because green just sort of says yuck. Yeah. Oh, oh, these young guys at Airbnb, I've met them, okay? I mean, they're, they're so young that I looked at this guy, whose son is he? And they said, this is the guy. I thought he had come with his father. <laughs> and they said, no, uh, founder of Airbnb. OK. So how do you set up a business where you invite a complete stranger to sleep in your house? Sounds ridiculous, right? But it's not. Because he probably saw it in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Uber, see, this guy was in Zimbabwe, the guy who started Lyft, which is still there, but smaller now than Uber. And he saw Africans saying, Lyft, Lyft, in the morning, and jumping into each other's cars. And to him, that was, wow. This is more efficient than LA. Because for him, he, th he saw all these cars that were full. And thought so Africans efficiently use cars better than we do. That was his mindset. Well, if he goes to our townships, the guy we had BMB, everybody's got lodgers giving an extra bedroom to somebody. Now he's running a $50 billion business called Airbnb. Probably learned it from some African schoolmate. Okay? There are things that you can digitize today. Start looking at the processes and things around you. Okay? Because they represent extraordinary entrepreneurial opportunities. Extraordinary. So, 
But going back to what was your issue again? About how, how do you get that seed to germinate from someone for them to know that they've got the idea? I mean, we, we've, we started Lyft, right? We were doing it here. Mm. How does someone begin to realize, oh, we can actually do that? That's a, something that... Well two, well, well, two things begin to happen. First of all, we've got to get past the idea. Okay? And the crazier it looks sometimes, the more entrepreneurial it is. I mean, take this company, Liquid Telecom. I never went out and told anybody th that this story before, but there was a guy who started an American company called Global Crossing. Okay? And he was laying cables that went round the world, undersea cables. And he called the company Global Crossing, it is still there. And one day I was sitting with one of my colleagues, a guy from Ivory Coast, worked for the company for a long time, is now retired. I said, why can't we have African Crossing? Why, we don't, why can't we build a fiber optic network that connects African countries together. Just don't tell the bank. <laughs> so we started. So we connected South Africa and Zimbabwe. Then when people got used to it, we extended it to Zambia. Then we extended it to DRC. Now, 70,000 kilometers later, it's in, it's in Cairo. Cape to Cairo, right? Cape to Cairo. We completed it. Only when I got to Ethiopia, and I went to see Prime Minister Abiy, and I said to him, I have a vision of Cape to Cairo, and I just need you to help me to cross over. <laughs> he said, done. Just like that. Done, 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 done. This is crazy. Just finish it, please, please. You know, everybody said, let's finish. President Kagame, everybody says, finish. Why, why didn't you tell us that before? I said, because you wouldn't have believed me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. And you were right, weren't you? They probably wouldn't have believed you. People wouldn't have believed us. Okay? So sometimes you've got to hold the vision, don't? Yes, I know. The young guy came up to me and says, I have a vision. I want to employ 400 million people. I say, yeah, yeah, just start on 4,000 for now. <laughs> start because, on four. Because the, uh, four. <laughs> because the bank will have a problem with you if you start pushing it too aggressively. Right. But anyway, let's move to some questions because I, I definitely need to fly out. We're going to do that. So what, what we will do is we've got a, a podium here. And what you're going to do is you'll come and line up. I'll bring the microphone to you personally. And then you'll have 30 seconds to ask your question. And then we'll move on to the other one. So if you've got a question, just come up and stand up to the podium right here. And I'll bring you the microphone. You need to keep it as brief as possible. And when I say brief, I actually mean brief. Uh, chairman has to be in... Nairobi in, in a couple of hours, so we'll try and do that very, very quickly. Also, if someone has asked a question that you had planned to ask already, just allow and move on since your answer has come. You're able to engage with him um, online and, and, and pick up from, from there when, when we move on. So we'll try and do that very quickly and, and try and um, we move need on. We see more women. A, a lot more women, obviously, right. Get some women in the queue. Where are the women? Only men want to ask questions. Where are the women? <laughs> right. Um, please do tell us your name and your question. Quick. Keep it to 30 seconds. Quickly. Uh, I'm called Dr. Lowell Bafoso Dembo, uh, CEO of Dembo Group and uh, Saga Workspace. Uh, my question is uh, what are the two or three things that you have to look at when you are choosing someone you can trust for your company? All right, so gentlemen, let's come and line this side. Huh? Just line up this side quickly, quickly, here, this side. Come you on. know, one of the first things that you, you must learn and focus on is what we call best practice. 
The question, most of the questions you were asking, somebody long ago asked and long ago addressed. Okay, so you're talking of a recruitment question. Okay, how do, you, the real question you're asking is, how do I recruit somebody? Okay, so one of the things you want to do is to talk to recruitment experts. Just talk to people who are HR managers and so forth. How do you recruit? What are the standard questions that you ask? For so example, we don't, there's no recruitment question in business called loyalty. It only exists in politics. Okay? We don't recruit people for loyalty. I don't say to you, are you going to be loyal to me? I don't know. It's not important, not in business. Okay? But focus on, get to the practitioners who will help you and put questions together on how you recruit. What are the best recruitment techniques? What are the questions I need to ask? Okay? Yes, you will check qualification, da 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 da. But there's also character. Qualifications and character, your two things. Thank you very much, Mr. Strive. Uh, my name is Faizo Waiswa. I run a cleaning company called Alpha General Cleaners Limited, and I am the operations director. My question to you is, uh, given the opportunity, what are some of those things you, would, you did back then and you wish you would undo them? Some of the things you regret to have done and given chance you think you would not Thank you. Thank you, Faisal. Faisal, simple answer, zero. <laughs> zero, no regrets. You know why? Changes nothing. Yeah. yeah. What does a regret change? Nothing. I focus on the lessons that I, that I have learned. Okay? So, if something goes wrong, I say, learning moment, I just got a diploma. Yes. Okay, just got a diploma. Okay, what shall I write on the certificate? <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. But you understand what I mean? No regrets. Okay, um, you never hear me say, you know MTN? It could have been mine. No. Actually, I almost bought Safaricom when it had 15,000 subscribers. How's that? Sh surely. Th no that's, regrets. That's got to be a regret. No. no. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Strive. Uh, my name is Dr. Dixon Nwasasera. I came all the way from Rukunjiri, 400 kilometers. Wow. Um, wow. I am the co-founder of Doctors Case Medicals Limited, which is a, an upcountry based medical uh, services delivery company. We run pharmacies and clinics. I just want you just said that Lyft started before Uber, but Lyft is smaller than Uber. So my question is, if I have started a business, it is moving and it's growing, how do I make sure that I stay at the top of the game, not what happened to Uber and Lyft? Listen, between you and me, Lyft's about to is, is about to go public. I think it's going to be worth something like 20, 30 billion dollars. I don't mind being that small. <laughs> <laughs> you know, focus on your own race. Okay? One of the fallacies, and I think we discussed it right at the beginning of our game together, I'd say, what business should you be in? Where's the money? Telecommunications? Mining, supermarkets, healthcare, where's the money? Which business should we be in? They're all the same. They all have money. The only business, you see, because if we all said micro, because Bill Gates went into Microsoft, into software, we must all now be in software. Well, the whole lot of guys lost their money that way. Okay, it's about where you are gifted and skilled at. So, your particular sector, boy, we could use some of that. 
go and expand and franchise this. Build this. And that guy with the cleaning service, dirt is good money. <laughs> Waste. Oh. I could be I could make a billion in that game. Invite me anytime. Come. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm by name of Andrew Pamze. I am still working as a marketing manager of uh, an export company, but I'm also running a recruitment firm, uh, which is still growing. Uh, my question is, first of all, Chairman, I've been following you religiously from 2015 on, on Facebook, and I couldn't miss this opportunity. So my question, I understand Econet Wireless Group is a, is a group of companies. It's a conglomerate now. But I would wish to know which was your first company and how much was your starting capital, because that can help me somewhere to understand. Well, there's a lot written about that. The other, I've done interviews. I right. just talked about it. But anyway. Okay, the other one, sir, is a bit personal. I would wish to... Um, we, we are only allowing one okay, question per so personal, much. so we're, we're going to have to move it. Please play by the rules. I think that's an important part of, of the game. Good. And yeah, it was $75, just so you know. Um, <coughs> Started with 75 bucks. $75. It's about 300,000 shillings. Here, about 300k. It was a lot in those days. <laughs> 1986. Yeah. Oh. But, you know, it's not about... And this is the key thing. I want you always to take this away. Raising money is a skill that you have to acquire. Okay? When you go looking for money and you don't succeed, have the humility to accept that there's a possibility that you don't know enough about raising money. Keep going back to the drawing board to think about how do we, how do we raise money. Okay? But it's not about how little you start with. In fact, sometimes when you have a lot, mistakes can be made which wouldn't have been made if you didn't have a lot. A lot. Okay, my brother. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is John Hendo Frank uh, Moti. I am um, an economist by training, but then I practice agriculture. Uh, recently, I was invited by the EU Commission, EU Presidency actually, to Austria for discussions about Africa and Europe, the partnerships they can have to leverage African commodities in the European market and how to improve our agriculture. And we focused on practical solutions for Africa. Now, among the biggest impediments, the bottleneck to African growth in agriculture is the processing sector because they mentioned three cogs that run the sector. That is the production, the processing, and the marketing. If Europe can provide the market, and Africa can provide the production, what is going to happen in between to turn this value into desirable commodities in Europe? What are we doing okay, based on got IT? It, got it. Thank you. Got it, my brother. OK. I'm going to take two, because I've got to rush you through. I really must go in the next half hour. Go Thank through. you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. My name is Tadias Matovu. I'm the founder of a company called ColorInternational.com. We have introduced a concept called Smart Engineering. We connect quality engineers to, to uh, uh, prospective customers. So if you have a problem, in the past, you used to have a phone, and you need to call, you need to call so and so. Now you need to go to our website, and you get those people that can serve you. They are tradesmen. Now, our challenge is there is general phobia that if I go to look for money from some big guy somewhere, he's going to swallow me because we have the idea just like anyone else. But then if I bring the idea, then maybe this guy is going to sidestep me, shunt me in electrical and start up the company okay, and I get it. pulled out. So this is, I, want, I, I would like to be helped. How do you avoid being shunted, to use electrical terms? That's the question there. We talk about it a lot on my platform, don't we? Entrepreneurship. One word you always hear 
at any time you discuss entrepreneurship is the word risk. It's one of the risks you take. But you have to take it. You see, it's like when the wildebeest have to cross. There are crocodiles in there. They have to cross. Somebody has got to cross. Okay? So there are risks associated with being an entrepreneur. Okay? And that's just one of them. So, but you are not the first to be confronted by it. No, are you going to be the last? Okay? Again, Again we go, go back, back to what I said, best practice. So, how, how do we protect? But if you, if you become so preoccupied with, I have to protect my idea, guess what? Nothing gets done. It's a risk you have to take. Okay? So, you take... You take what measures you can to mitigate against it, but it's a risk you must take. Okay? I, I cannot comfort you. Okay? But if you ask me, take the risk. You know, okay, so what if somebody runs away with my idea? Thank God it's not the last time I'm going to think. <laughs> another one. <laughs> Chairman, you're welcome to Kampala. Thank you. My name is Wanyama. I run a company called Syntech Africa, IT services, networks, and cybersecurity. I hope to ask you a senior class question. How do you maintain resilience as an entrepreneur? Because you've got to keep having passion, but in the face of issues with maybe the taxman, the regulators, your shareholders, competitors, how do you keep going and how do you ensure that you don't lose the fire? How do you make sure you don't collapse? <laughs> Thank you. First and foremost, pay your taxes. <laughs> okay. uh, Chairman, I need to add on, the, on that particular one. We've got a tax that many people in this room have been evading. It's called OTT. You've, you've had the man. Please pay your taxes. <laughs> If you know, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, we must pay our taxes, okay? And you must plan, your business plan must include the fact that you pay taxes and you pay employees. If the business plan is designed in such a way that you're going to make money but you're not going to pay taxes and you're not going to make employees, that makes you a thief, yeah. okay? So we pay our taxes. But I hear where you're coming from. You know, there's an expression that says, Africa's high maintenance. Because we have a lot of headwinds on our continent. Okay? I, I pray that the headwinds that you have to deal with are not going to be as great as the ones I had to deal with. But let me tell you, weaknesses of our currencies is a headwind. An entrepreneur in, the, in Silicon Valley does not have to think, what's my money worth? <laughs> Devaluations, okay? Uh, inflation, interest rates, all these, they're part of the development matrix, okay? And so you have to uh, be aware of them, fortify yourself towards them. Actually, in Africa, competition isn't the greatest challenge we have, okay? It is the headwinds, the macro, what we call the macroeconomic headwinds that we face in our economies, okay? But that's part of what you have to train yourself as a super athlete to deal with. Because you have to train yourself like a super athlete. This entrepreneurship is not for sissies. Okay? If you're one for... Uh, this is not for you. Okay? It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll give you a job, okay? <laughs> okay. You're, you're saying but, that Liverpool fans make very good entrepreneurs. Heart attacks, all, heart attacks all the way. I'm not putting my money on that one. <laughs> but it's going to be a nice finish. 
But look, let me say to you one very important thing. The entrepreneur, the most important person that you have to recruit into your business, the most important people that you have to recruit into your business are called entrepreneurs. A business that has no entrepreneurs that work within the business is going to die. Yeah. Okay, hire each other. <laughs> yeah, in here when you're done, look around. Okay, some of you are going to become co-founders of the other. I want you to start thinking about who amongst these guys and, and are your co-founders. Okay? Because you see, Steve Jobs is dead. Long live Apple. Who's, who's developing the products since Mr. Job is dead? They work for him. They're employees. Don't think that organizations don't hire people who come up with ideas. When our people come to me and say, someone in Econet stole our idea, I say, really? I get 10,000 ideas every month from Econet employees. I'm swamped by these guys. That's why they're there. That's why they're going to come at us with PhDs and what have you. Because they are there for ideas. Anyone who hasn't got an idea doesn't get my attention. Brother. Thank you so much, Dr. Strive. Uh, my name is Faizo Iwombe. Um, running a company called High Tech Water Solutions Limited. We deal in water treatment. Uh, the reason being, uh, we need water as much as we need air. Uh, most of our clients are industries. We also have homes and, you know. Watch we, we this believe. guy. Watch, come, come, come. What's your question? My question. Great business. Uh, I want to be in it. Okay. <laughs> I Dr. want to be in water. Dr. Shriver, I'm inviting you because I've followed you for the past <laughs> five years. Then what happened? Also, You've no. been with me five. Yeah, and I fought to get in here. Okay. Because <laughs> I came late. He's a witness. Go, go, go brother. Go yeah. Brother. So uh, I actually don't have a question, but I need to appreciate. Doctor, I'm sorry, it's not personal, but uh, I would just like to say, we need you back in Kampala as soon as possible. You can, you can come, talk to us. Most of us are writing down. Get a point? I'm quite sure some of us are going to leave what we've written here. I have been following you everywhere you go. Rwanda, Nairobi, you're there so many times. In Kampala, if I'm not mistaken, this is your first time. <laughs> For your information, Uganda is one of the best when it comes to entrepreneurs. So right. briefly, we welcome you back. But, but, Thank you. My brother, Point med. don't go, don't go. So, at that conference where I was just now, what did I tell? Did you hear what I told them? Did you heard? I said to the policy makers, I said to the president, Mr. President, you have fantastic entrepreneurs here. Just believe in them. Just believe in them. I said, right here, they are Mark Zuckerbergers. Right here in Uganda. They are here. They just need you to believe in them. Okay, so I may not be here physically, but believe you me, I believe in you. I do. And you know, the president called me over lunch. He said, let's go over what you said again. I said, Mr. President, let's put policies in place to support these young people. I said, here you have them. Hmm? You, we've got Starbucks here. Let's not talk anymore about coffee. Let's talk about our brands that we are going to make from our products. Yes, you have found oil. Let's start talking about our plastic industry, not our oil production. Because if we just talk about oil, and gas, we will be Venezuela. 
They have more oil and gas than you can ever imagine. Look where they are. Okay? Today, who is the biggest oil producer in the world? Do you know which country it is? It's the United States. But they're not the biggest exporter because they use all their oil. Okay? So we are not going to export oil. We are going to use oil. Is that, that's what this generation should be preoccupied with. We are not going to export oil. We are going to use oil as a raw material to produce product. Which comes back to the guy talking about processing. Entrepreneurs don't talk processing. We talk innovation. What is processing? No. Entrepreneurs think about innovation. What can I innovate out of this? Hmm? You know, I wrote about uh, Washington Carver. Hmm? I said, he's, he picked up a peanut. He said, God, why did you make this? Why did you create a peanut? He said, take a piece of paper. Write 100 uses of the common peanut. What are we doing with the common peanut? can't just be sold by a child at a bus stop. That was for another generation. We have to innovate. We are the generation of innovators using our raw materials so that when people come for our oil, we say, sorry, we've run out too. Because this, this guy has been taking it all for his business. <laughs> That's your question. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Strife. Uh, my name is Mbina Innocent, the CEO of Rewarding Africa Entrepreneurs. Uh, traveled all the way from Kabale. Uh, you talked about uh, half of Africa uh, uh, in the category of eight, 19 years. And when you under, talked, eight, under 19. Under 19. And when you talked about that, I, I saw money. Uh, because like Mark Zuckerberg started his company when he was still un, un, in a tender age. I personally started my company at 19 years and now I'm successful. So, how can we shape that category of, of young generation uh, to become, to develop the economy of Africa? Thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, big question. So was Bill Gates. I think he was about 19, eh? Yeah, yeah so you're on your way to being a billionaire. God bless you, man. <laughs> it's a big question, so I'll need to push the line. Come, go on. Thank you so much. My name is Abel. I'm a finance student, plus... Uh, a blockchain enthusiast and uh, I'm curious what do you think about cryptocurrencies and do, do you think they will replace paper money thank you what was the last part of your question do I think one? do you think they will replace do you think it's the next phase of of currencies in the world you know I don't know enough about cryptocurrencies it's always important to acknowledge what you don't know I'm curious about them, but I'm much more fascinated by blockchain, the underlying technology that drives. Cryptocurrency is something coming out of blockchain, as you know. Okay? And it's the things we are going to be able to do with blockchain. Okay? Cryptocurrency may or may not replace uh, state governments, uh, uh, central bank. Uh, as, as, as sources of money. It's, it's, it's too early to tell. But what I do know is blockchain is a game changer. All right. Um, hello, sir. My name is Martha Chirabo. I'm a believer, an assistant lecturer, and a master's student of economics. Um, my question is, has a bit of context. As a child, I was bold. I sold snacks out of my lunchbox at uni, sold noodles in my room. As an adult, I'm plagued with paralysis of analysis. How do I overcome this? And what's the place of an entrepreneur in a world of entrepreneurs? What's the world of what? <laughs> that last part. What's the place of an entrepreneur in a world of entrepreneurs? What's the place of, um, what's the place of an entrepreneur in a world of entrepreneurs. 
I answered that in the last question when I was talking about you got to bring entrepreneurs into your organization because that's the own entrepreneur. You know, you will not be an entrepreneur until you're ready to move out of your comfort zone. You have to get out of that comfort zone. That's all it is. Sometimes it's just as simple as quitting your job. Sometimes it's putting a time limit. That's the day I'm leaving. I remember going back to uh, uh, when I left my job. I worked for the telephone company, the equivalent of Uganda Telecom in those days. And I went to see the head of the entire organization. I was quite a junior guy. I remember I was only 26. And I said to the boss guy, he was called the postmaster general. <laughs> I said, I'm leaving. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to start a business. He said, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Because in those days, if you had a university degree, the very suggestion, the only person who believed me was my mother, because she'd never worked. And she couldn't understand why I worked. <laughs> 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 so when I came and I said, I've quit, she said, oh, OK, that's good. Are you starting a business? I said, yes, ma. I said, good. Do you need any help? I said, can I borrow your kitchen table? <laughs> Thank you so much, Chairman. My name is Habat. I'm uh, the co-founder of RACI. We offer clean cooking biogas energy and uh, clean water rural communities. Clean? Clean cooking biogas energy. OK. And okay. Uh, clean drinking water, yep. especially for rural communities. Uh, my question is on the post you made previously about Ugesi.com. Mm -hmm. I must say I'm really into that. When mm -hmm. you posted it, uh, I commented and you know that. So I really want to know because you told us that you began in Zimbabwe and uh, you want to roll it out to scale it up to other countries. So I want to know how can we get involved into this? Because as people into clean energy for rural communities, I feel we're the right people to either adopt the model or find a way to work with you. Okay, so what you're doing is incredibly important. Okay, particularly now that your country has got gas. And there's gonna be a lot of gas in the region. You're an applier of that gas, okay? We've got, you know, Africa looks big, but she's incredibly fragile. She's got such a fragile ecosystem. The challenge your generation is going to have is will there be even lions to hand over to your own children in, if we are going to manage a population of 4X where, from where we are? And by the way, I and my fathers before you guys did it. If somebody says to you, how is Africa going to feed 4 billion people? You say, cool, cool, take it easy. We're only 250 million in the 1950s. Now we're 1.2 billion. And we did not lose a billion along the way, OK? OK, so we are better educated. We are smarter. And we are more peaceful than at any time in our history in our modern recorded history. That is a fact. Those are just hard facts. Okay? There are no two African countries at conflict with each other. Don't let it happen under your watch today. But there are Asian countries that are at conflict with one another. There are European countries that have conflict with one another. There are no two African countries today. Eritrea, Ethiopia was the last. Okay? When I was a young man, huh, it was everywhere. Okay? You, 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 if you said, I'm going to Ghana, your mother said, please, please, you can't go there. It's okay. I'm going to uh, Uganda or wherever. Okay? I remember this country at war. Oh, absolutely. I remember this country at war, okay? So when I look, I'm amongst those who are 
full of joy. Okay? Because of the opportunity you have. You just got to build your economy, build your, your businesses, employ your colleagues. That's all you got to do. You've never had it so easy. Brother. Thank you, Strive. Yes, My name is Ayen Tone. I co-founded a company called Tech Technologies. We're a software developing company. I developed an app that can capture crime, and I would want you to advise me how government can take it up on. <laughs> because it will enhance the lives of the people. Why does your app need government? <laughs> Why? Because it, is, it will solve crime to a large extent. You see, yes, I can see your app. But you see, innovation needs a business model. There are so many innovations every day that die because the entrepreneur has not found the business model. So the real challenge for you is how do you turn this app of yours into something people need and are willing to pay for? Okay? It is about finding a business model for this app. Okay? Going back to it so that he says, you know what? I need this app. Because if you have to need a regulator somewhere, Okay, to bring about such an important development. Because we all need to deal with crooks, right? Eh? So you're on to something, but what you need to do is to revisit the business model, maybe crowdsource with some of these hot entrepreneurs here. Thank you. Thanks, my brother. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Clovis, and I have learned that whenever I see something moving, it requires energy. So I'd like to know from you what is the source of your energy and most importantly, how do you renew it daily to keep moving? Oh, you mean my energy? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dynamo. <laughs> the Greek was dunamis. <laughs> you shall receive power from on high. Acts, Acts chapter 1, Acts in case you need to know where that's coming right. from, just for context for you. You shall be dynamic. You've got to generate it from within. But you know, you talked earlier on about energy. Technologies keep coming through. Okay? Back in the early 90s, 1990s, I had already began to see it when I was at university. But by the time we hit the 90s, mobile phones had arrived. Okay? At university, it was technically possible that we'd have wireless communications. They'd already done the first mobile phones in the Bell Labs as early as 1973. Okay? We were waiting for this technology to hit a tipping point at which the cost can take it commercially to the people. So fast forward, what has it got to do with energy? Solar energy has just hit the same tipping point. Solar energy right now is at the same point as mobile technology was 1994. 25 years from now, you'll be embarrassed at any suggestion that you dam water in a big dam in order to provide electricity to people. Okay? And you will consider it a crime that you burnt coal. And I can assure you that most Africans will have electricity. Go entrepreneur it. What have you got? My name is Olavi from Wakanola. 
we basically sell advertisement space on uh, the biggest digital LED screen in the city, located in Wandegea. And um, I'm very glad to be here because this is all business, and I hope we can do business after this. But my main question is, Chairman Strive, when I finally get rid of the static billboards in this city, mm. and I bring in digital LED billboards all over, Will you tell my story to the world? <laughs> that I met him. I know him. All of you from Wakanola. I will. You will. I will. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you your story. There's a young man who had a business, who inherited a business from his father in a small town. Okay? In Kampala, it, it was a big town compared to where he was. Okay? He had a, he had a billboard company. And he began to, he took over, his father passed away. He started to run this billboard company. And then he started to have other ideas. His name is Ted Turner, CNN. <laughs> and he told me the story himself last year. Wow. Over dinner, he sat there. I said, Ted, how did you start? He said, surely you've heard the story. I said, but not from you, Ted. One of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. Okay? Some of the greatest companies in the world, even today. You see some of, you know this company, what they call the me, the one with billboards? Uh, what they, Alliance, Alliance Media. Media. Can I tell you something? I gave them their break. They are young Zimbabweans, just like you. Two white young Zimbabweans walked into my office one day and said, we would like to do billboards for you. And I gave them their billboard. They started putting little billboards around the city, locating t different suburbs. That was there, they went into the big billboards because they're not so young anymore. <laughs> okay, it's a great business. Okay, so build on it and take it to the next level. Well done. And if he does tell your story, you must give Econet Media absolutely free advertising yeah, yeah, free, on all yeah. your billboards, you know, for life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, you're going to be a competitor, man. Okay, so my name is Dorothy Aibo Omweru. I'm a yes. medical officer. And my question... You're a medical what? I'm a medical doctor, mm -hmm. but I run a social enterprise called mm -hmm. Dasha Support Group that seeks to promote the health of vulnerable groups. So my question is, is there a place for business entrepreneurship within social entrepreneurship. The reason I ask is that the enterprise needs money and seems to take more than make money and yet we need to do business to make money for sustainability. So I'd appreciate your comment on that. Sure. So, the, so there are those two approaches to your social entrepreneurship. Okay. You are the generation that must do business with purpose. And the purpose cannot be making money. Okay? M making money is just a byproduct. If you're a good entrepreneur, you will make money. You ever, sit, you ever listen to Bill Gates, any of these guys? They're probably quite surprised that one day they actually made money. Now, I, 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 I just remember the day I went to the bank. Okay? It's quite a few years back. I went to the bank. And this bank manager was, walked in, he said, have you seen your share price recently? I said, yeah, what is it? He said, by my calculation, you are worth 100 million US dollars. I said, really? He said, yes. So he showed me the calculation. I said, does that mean you can lend me some money today? <laughs> <laughs> because at that, my preoccupation was not some share price rising up. My preoccupation was what were the things that I was doing. So as an entrepreneur today, we, we can be social entrepreneurs or we can be for-profit entrepreneurs. Okay. And Africa needs social entrepreneurs as much as it needs the for-profit entrepreneurs. Some people do the for-profit and then redirect their, their profits to do what they want to do their purpose. So we want business with a purpose. 
okay? Or you are into social, uh, straight into your social enterprise, but you need to find a mechanism by which it is self-sustainable, so that you are not always asking people for donations, okay? So the same principles that apply in running a good business apply also to a good social enterprise. I hope that's helpful for you. But doctor, go heal the people. We're almost done. What do you have? Is this your organization? Everything's in here. And what are, what are these inside? No, no. I'm about to sit on a plane for an hour. Guys, we're at the end of our program. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Strife, for Last coming two. to Uganda. Last two, and we're done. Come quick. Thank yes. you. Uh, now, my, my thing is here. I'm really glad to meet you, a person who believes in God, and actually you have made it in the world. It is very hard to meet somebody like you. And uh, for the evils around business, I'm just wondering how you make it uh, to be a believer and then to also do business at a be very big level. Because down here, as... So, so sorry, I didn't even introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Ivan Dumba. I'm, also, I'm the founder of uh, uh, Decenta Holdings Limited, and we are making okay. chocolate. I got, I got yes. your question. Thank you, so, Ivan. Just one thing. Uh, it is about corruption and then bribery, because yeah, we are really... I'm going to answer so it that way. How do you stay Thank straight you. and still okay. be big? That's the question there. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, great to meet you, Dr. Strayer. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a so Elizabeth Kasuja. I'm a social entrepreneur. I work with Clear Your Mind, which is an organization that raises awareness for mental health and connects people dealing with mental health issues to the professional help that they need. So my question, I'm really inspired by you. I was a, I'm a stalker on Facebook. I know that I've met you in person. I'm really more in love um, with... No, like, I really love you more, but... Someone <laughs> called the police. <laughs> go on, go on. Um, so question, my Elizabeth. question is, how do you manage to do it all? Because you seem physically fit, your mental health seems to be doing really well. We found that young people, most of the young people that reach out for help, usually mental health issues don't start out as someone having more depression or anxiety. It can start out as normal stress, and then you let it escalate over two weeks, and now you're anxious, and now you're depressed, and it's developing into all these other things. So there's also a lot of peer pressure and bad influence, drug and substance abuse. So how have you gotten here? How do you take care of your mental health, and what's your advice to young people? Well, first of all, I wrote about mental health a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember? You saw that. Please, you may say. Okay, so I'll close on the two questions. I'll finish with her first, and then I'll come back to the earlier question. So, what is important, guys? You know, the wonderful thing about Africa's youth, the beauty of youth, is we learn. We are the adapters. You are the guys that learn and adapt and change and establish new ways of looking at things. Mental health is a clinical condition. Okay? It is as much a clinical condition as diabetes. It's a, it's a clinical condition. So if you have a friend who has saying they are depressed, okay, it's a clinical condition which needs medical attention. Okay? If you have a relative, stop playing and listening to people saying funny stuff. Okay? If you have a relative, a friend, a colleague that is suffering from depression, it's a clinical condition. It needs medication like someone got malaria. You do not shun somebody because they started getting malaria, right? So don't shun somebody because they're showing signs of depression or mental health. They need help and they need it straight away. Okay? And it's our job to take away stigma associated with mental health. When you get to my age, believe you me, you have seen extraordinary things that I wouldn't want to talk about. I've seen suicides, I've seen all sorts of things that shouldn't have happened if some of us had been a little bit more careful. Okay? Somebody showing signs of violence, maybe a partner. Okay? 
don't stay in that arrangement without seeking help because you can get killed. I had an employee where that happened. Okay? And, and when you asked everybody at work, yeah, you know, you know uh, the guy used to beat her. Well, now he's killed her. Is that nice? No. These are clinical conditions that we must improve awareness amongst our workers, amongst our colleagues, that we must be supportive and not build off on old wives' tales. The other question was, how does a business person stay clean? Well, how does a civil servant stay clean? How does a politician stay clean? It's, 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 business isn't any more dirty. It, what, politics is not dirty. Business is not dirty. It's dirty people in politics and it's dirty people in business. It's dirty people in public service. Okay? So don't think of business as being, oh, you know, what about, uh, how do you stay clean in business? Which is the easiest place. Because all you've got to remember is no bribe can take place without two people. You know, it's a beauty. How does a bribe take place if there weren't two people involved? And if you're one of them? <laughs> okay. You know, I've always said to people who in America and Europe now says Africa is corrupt. That's how do you know? <laughs> Did you pay us? <laughs> Did you pay somebody? Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So. The thing is, you only sleep in one bed at a time. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If you come into my lounge, guess what? The same chairs that were there 10 years ago are pretty much still there, the room, the arrangements. Okay? You can only sleep in one bed at a time. Okay? If you get preoccupied with, I'm doing this for the money, then you will cut yourself short. But if you just sort of focus on the fact that I'm going to be successful doing what I need to do, okay? If people ask for a bribe, I'm not going to be there. And if it has to be spiritual, fine. Okay? But remember, I have to run an organization in which I have people from every faith. Okay? And I have to respect their right to have their faith and believe what they want to believe, including those who say they don't want to believe. I can only talk for myself in a very personal way. It's a source of strength. Okay? It enables me to say, you know what? We can walk away from this. Okay? And if we don't make the money, fine. But I will still sleep in one bed, I will still drive one car. Okay? Because I have known people who made that money. Okay? And ended up in terrible situations because of corruption. I've also known people who were sons and daughters of the most powerful people you could imagine. Okay? And I heard from the same people when they were in trouble. Okay? So don't admire them. What was it David said? He said, you know, I have, I have, been, old, I have been young and now I'm old. Mm. Hmm? Mm. Yeah. So, your children will not suffer simply because you refuse to pay. If somebody here starts, why don't we start a trending? We don't do corruption. Amen. We don't do bribes. Then who is going to bribe if we make it a trend? Why don't we make it a fashion, a trend? And on that note, guys, I'm away. God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Wakoli to come and do a vote of thanks in 30 seconds before Chairman goes. Um, as he comes, please be more givers than takers. Uh, I think you follow Chairman's page. There's something about Ugesi that's been going on over the last couple of months. You might want to go and read a bit about that. It shows you why you should 
focus more on giving than being needy. In Africa, we have a problem of just always wanting to be receiving rather than giving. Dr. Wakoli, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, can I speak on your behalf? I think what Dr. Strive has done has birthed lots of ideas, has spurred many of you on, and people know him for doing big businesses like Grace and Liquid Telecom. But I think he will be known better for the millions of ideas that he has planted in young people. The energy that I saw in you guys, the enthusiasm with which you asked the questions, is not a waste of time that you came, doctor. We appreciate the fact that in your busy schedule, you spared some time. And I think you people want him again. Maybe something bigger next time. And much more deliberate. And much more time. We'll, we'll, so I am just expressing that need. We'll force Richard to pay for it. <laughs> he has a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, finally, on behalf of the Kwese team, Kwese staff, lots of staff here, part of the reason why they are working is because they believe in you. They read yeah. your ideas. Yep. They follow you. Yes. Yep. They are motivated by you. Yep. And so we want to appreciate you and appreciate you so much and pledge that we shall do our best to make sure that Kwese is that brand that you're looking for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask that we remain seated for just a moment. Uh, so Dr. Strive is going to take a quick photo with a few people outside. And then as soon as it's done, we'll, we'll be ready to leave. And um, please get to network with one another. Like he said, there are many co-founders sitting in here. So you might want to get to know one another and find out what do you do that other people do that will be very, very helpful for you, that could help birth that business idea that you have been chasing. So please get to know one another. I'll have my friends from Legacy Entertainment play some little bit of music for, for us in the meeting. Liquid Telecom is the leading independent data, voice and IP provider in Eastern, Central and Southern Africa. We supply fiber optic, satellite and international carrier services to mobile networks, ISPs and businesses of all sizes. At the very core of our business is our belief that every individual on the continent has the right to be connected. We're in it for the long run and so have invested heavily in building our own fiber network, the largest on the continent. Put simply, we connect people. Quase iFlix is here, bringing you the freshest lineup of live streaming and on-demand sports and entertainment. Simply download and register to get instant access to a huge selection of free sports, movies, reality shows and more. Join the VIP circle and get a one-day, three-day, seven-day or 30-day VIP pass to enjoy premium entertainment. Where's the iFlix? Download the app now. Africa's most loved and only free sports channel, Quest Free Sports, now has an app. The app lets you watch premium live sports content on the go, whenever and wherever you are. Catch up on highlights, stay up to date with the latest sports news and more. Set reminders and plan your viewing with the TV guide so that you never miss out on your favorite sports programs. It's easy to use and it's absolutely free. So, what are you waiting for? Download it now on Google Play or the App Store. 